IT. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. Another Briscoe and Eads edition of Sports Hi. Center in full effect. And we're going to keep the vibe pushing on the hardwood where the NBA's longest active win streak coming into the night resided in Houston? Yeah, because if at any point you predicted this, you freaking lie. The longest winning streak in the NBA currently at nine games. Not bad for a team that was what? In the basement of the NBA yeah. how many years ago? Not that long ago. Taking out what could be the one seed in the West and the Thunder. No Shea Gilgis Alexander though. And that's bad news for the Thunder because they're winless without him. It's been a game, but let's go with it. Isaiah Joe providing whatever oh. this is. Some anger, oh. some aggression. I'm also speechless. Poor Jeff Green. Because guess what? <laughs> he was called for the foul. <laughs> Man, come on. Yep, you get dunked on and you are um, letting the guy go to the line. Uh, here's how it sounded. Joe, they have numbers the other way. He'll attack Green! Thunder by one, Joe, by the way, 17 points. Seven minutes left. Uncle Jeff didn't deserve that. That's he did not. He tried to draw the charge and it like backfired and it did not work. Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, he would be big. Bucket and the foul, he'd make it. The game is a one-pointer. Green, again, for the layup. Rockets tie it at 101. This is all in the fourth quarter. This game was back and forth the whole time, but there were seven lead changes just in the fourth. Josh Giddy had 31. How does that fall? Loses the ball. He is on the ground and he's like, wing and a prayer. That's a good choice. That's a horse. I mean, game. it worked. Green now, 30 seconds left. Rockets down one to Jabari Smith. Three, giving Houston the lead. But we go back to the Thunder down three. 10 seconds to play. Jalen Williams. Let's just tie this up with one shot. Okay, tied again. Now it's at 112 for you, 112 for me. Tie game. Green with the ball. He's been so good. It's not right oh. there. Why end this spectacular game at just four? No, extra, extra. And Green had 37. Five of them came in overtime. Three right there. That put the Rockets up six. Then next Rockets possession. Rockets only up three. Well, there's his five. Mm -mm. 37 wow. points, nine rebounds, seven assists, and the Rockets win again, this time over the Thunder, 132-126. It is their 10th straight win. Man, made a lot of mistakes, didn't play great. Um, let's keep playing. Like, five minutes left, who, who wanted the most? You know what I'm saying? We didn't play a great game. A lot of silly mistakes, a lot of dumb mistakes. We grinded it out, you know what I'm saying? I think early in the season, I don't think we would have did that. You know what I'm saying? So it just shows the growth and the maturity that we've had throughout the season. So I'm happy we just came out here with a win. How would you describe what this team has been able to do, especially in the last month? Uh, just show how much growth, how much everybody's buying in. You know, um, everybody want to win. You know what I mean? And I feel like we couldn't say that at the beginning of the season. And now it's just everybody's buying in, everybody see a goal, and we're just chasing it. Obviously, when you win 10 in a row, your home road splits are going to be pretty perfect. But this was a team that was really bad on the road before this yeah. winning streak began. They've been able to ride this Jalen Green streak as well. He's absolutely dominated the last 10 games, scoring nearly 30 points per game. Shooting percentages, awesome. Shooting 10% higher from the field and range um, than his season averages. All of this just in the last 10. All of them wins. But those 10 straight wins by Houston have put a lot of pressure Ooh. on Draymond Green and the Warriors because they're in danger of not making the playoffs at all, not even the play-in. And maybe that frustration came out in a way no one for Golden State wanted to see. Taking on the Magic in Orlando, foul called there on Paolo Bancaro. Draymond is like, wait a minute, this can't be right. So he's talking to Ray Acosta, the official. A little bit later, Bancaro drives again. This time, Andrew Wiggins is called for the foul. But after the play, Draymond immediately goes to Acosta, puts his arm on, is like, look, man, steps on his foot, maybe that was an accident, continues to argue, ends up getting a tech, still talking, still talking, then Steph Curry comes over, and Steph seems like, all right, okay, we good. Clearly, they're not seeing the same viewpoint of whatever's in question, but Draymond wouldn't let it go. Even Chris Paul is out there, it's a dead ball, and then right there, whatever Draymond said, Acosta was done with it. He ejects him. Gone. And watch Steph just shaking his head. Clearly the emotions of frustration yeah. for Steph is there because we keep seeing Draymond go out of these games. He's been ejected again this season. Of course, he had the suspension. Here is Steph on that emotional display right there. 
You know how important this season is, or this part of the season is, and our ability to get into a, a, a rhythm and secure a playing opportunity and give ourselves a shot. We don't want to have self-inflicted wounds when it comes to that. And I, we all care. We all are passionate about you know, the game, our uh, our chances to have something to play for down the stretch. So you give everything you got to this game, and that's the emotion. And that what emotion, a decision. right? I mean, that's the emotion that you would expect. And also the fans feel the same way. And they keep watching Draymond do this. Now, he was tossed less than four minutes into the game. Fourth time he's been ejected this season. Second time has happened in the opening quarter. His 19 career ejections are the second most in the NBA over the last 25 years. The only guy he's trailing is Rasheed Wallace. But after all that happened, Steph and crew still had to go out there and try to win this game because if Houston won and Golden State lost, they would be tied for the last spot in the play-in. Steph to Clay Thompson, who's been playing better as of late. Warriors up eight. About a minute to play, they're up three now. Bancaro, Franz Wagner, set up a little double team on Steph. Yeah, whatever. All the way to the rack, off the glass. They're up five. And the next possession for the dubs, Steph backs down Jalen Suggs, gets it to go. And you know what he did? He put the magic mm. in this entire game to sleep. But again, even afterwards, the emotion from Steph. So you go from frustration to elation. He's going to the locker room, and who does he see? Draymond with that same sleep emoji. They need to put that on Twitter. Yeah, I was just letting, a lot of little letting out a little steam. Uh, nothing's guaranteed in this league. Like I said, the way that we went out and, and competed. Maybe it's just the way that you kind of see you know, you're, you're back against the wall kind of out. I don't know how many people would have picked us in this type of game, you know. Team points for Steph, and as Steve Kerr alluded to, it needed every single one of them. So now the Rockets and the Warriors separated by just one game for the final play-in spot heading into the last month of the season. Golden State is favored in their next four games, according to BPI, including a slight edge over Houston in that April 4th matchup. The Dubs, by the way, 2-0 against H-Town this season. Do you remember when uh, James Harden used to play for the Sixers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's back while well, now playing for the Clippers. In his return to the city, he was asked Monday, like, how do you feel about Philly fans and going back? And he's like, I don't know, and I don't care. We have bigger problems than me being worried about Philadelphia. True. How do you think the fans responded? Uh, duh. <laughs> That is not how they acted every time he touched or missed. Like, I would have thought Philly. the entire crowd was body snatched. Harden Philly. had 16 points in his return. Tyrese Maxey, how about the little lane before the buzzer? Now, that's important because Philly, when they are um, leading by 10 or more in the first quarter, they're perfect this season. Cue the uh-oh. Kawhi Leonard. I need to tell you that the Clippers did not lead until the fourth quarter, and their largest lead was one. Next Sixers possession after that Kawhi bucket. Mm. Buddy Heald buried that. Sixers back up to Clippers. An immediate response from Kawhi. Big for the Clippers. Plus the foul, he would make the free throw. The lead now one. Eight seconds left, Sixers inbounding. Kelly Oubre drives, goes for the lane. Blocked by Kawhi. And it's stuck between the hoop and the backboard. Now Oubre wanted a foul. Did not get it. Not a foul. And a jump ball is called. Obviously, Nick Nurse isn't happy. The jump ball is there. Oubre drives in again. Doesn't get the shot up in time. Also potential contact there with Paul George. No call made there either. Game is over. Clippers win 108-107. Meanwhile, Nick Nurse, Oubre giving the refs an absolute earful. First and foremost, um, heat of the moment. Uh, this is an intense basketball game, of course. And, you know, we're not perfect. The refs aren't perfect. I want to apologize for just losing my cool because that's something I try to work on each and every day and try to represent God in the best way I possibly can, and that wasn't it. So, um, you know, I just ask for forgiveness. But I saw Coach Nurse getting riled up, and my, if our coach is going to fight for us and, you know, he's going there, then I'm right behind him. So, uh, but at the end of the day, 
it wasn't cool. So, you know, I'll take whatever penalties come with that and, you know, you have to move on. But uh, I got to be better in a sense. Listen, I think he took it in there pretty hard. Right. I looked at it on the screen on, on our computer a couple times. I thought it was certainly contact, certainly as much as be, with the last two or three that got called and ones at the other end. And that's all. I just I just thought it was enough contact to call. What does the identity of this team need to be moving forward? Defensively, that last play right there is, is what we need to rely on. You know, whether we're making shots or not, it's a part of the game. It's a part of basketball. You know, but defensively, we need to rely on that and continue to have that defensive uh, physicality for four quarters. And uh, tonight was a good start. So much was made about your return here to Philly. Did you receive the welcome you expected? These fans are what they are. Uh, you know, for the year and a half I was here, I had some really good moments here. But for somebody to sacrifice as much as I did, and I don't even want to get into it, but uh, it, it is what it is. They're great fans, and uh, we heard it tonight. All right, the pool report just came out. Yeah. It says there should have been a foul on Oubre. Ooh. So take that. The Clippers, by the way, this is their seventh 15-point comeback this season that ties the King for the most in the NBA. They're going to try to keep that momentum going against the Orlando Magic, who obviously just lost. Uh, that game is Friday. Er, Knicks at Raptors and fastest on the at because they are favored by 13 and a half and they have not been favored on the road by that much since I was 12. Wow. You just Do gave your full age on Sports Center. math. Knicks. This was the Miles McBride show early on. Friends call him Deuce. Are we friends? Probably not. So I'm going to call him Miles. Jalen to McBride. That is a three. New York up eight. Now 14. McBride again. He had six three-pointers in the first quarter. That ties a Knicks franchise record. He finished with nine. Yes, sir. Instead of Deuce, they should call him Trey. <laughs> All the threes. Well, wait. That, it, this is that. No. Can you explain uh, it? Yeah, some people call three Trey. Got it. Knicks up 19, make it 21. That is actually the only shot that he made all night that wasn't a three. See? Knicks right. dropped 80 in the first half. That is a lot. Third quarter, Knicks now up 20. Brunson behind the back. Oh, to Josh Hart. Hart then goes back to Brunson. Brunson for the three because he had 26. The lead is 31. This is going to overtime. What is happening with the dunks in the NBA lately? Knicks covered. Uh, they won by 44. 145, 101. Why do you have all the good dunks? Uh, Max Struess not played since March Nancy 3rd. Nancy likes me more than you. Cavs taking on the Hornets. Uh, and the Cavs came out a little warm from deep. 13 threes in the first half. Tied for their most and a half this season. They shot 61.9% from three in that half. They did all that just to have a one-point lead at the break, 70 to 69. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Hornets up one. Brandon Miller on the drive. Oh, I finally got a dunk. You are welcome. Miller Mine going was two hands with My the finish. My two were better. His squad was up three. You're right. Darius Garland, speaking of three, gave his squad, though, a two-point advantage. And then Miller up to Miles Bridges. Hornets tied again. Next possession for Charlotte. The rookie Miller hits the floater. 113-111. Less than 30 to go. Corners with a four-point lead. Who do you go to? Miller. He finished with 31. Was it Miller time? And the Hornets win it by seven. Would you I'm like not, me to I'm explain sure that one? Old enough to drink Miller that you like. <laughs> Is anyone? Uh, some people are, yeah. We both are, for sure. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, speaking of returns, he's set to come back Friday. That'd be a huge welcome for the Cavs. Cleveland struggled without their superstar this season, averaging just 107 points per game. That would rank 28th in the league, above only the team they lost to tonight, the Hornets and the Grizzlies, who don't have John Moran. Miller is 21, by the way. Oh, he is? 